The next part of Lecture 38 involves learning how to name organic compounds. For a start, if we're going to name alkanes, which have all carbon-carbon single bonds, step one is find the longest continuous chain. This is known as our root. And if we have all single bonds, our suffix is ane. So here I have some alkanes. I have a five carbon, a four carbon, and a two carbon. Let me go over the root for you. Starting at five carbons, geometry will help you out. Five carbons, you know a five-sided figure is a pentagon, so pent is the root. And then of course for six, we have hex. For seven, we have hept. For eight, we have oct. For nine, we have known. And for 10, we have des as the root. The roots are slightly different for organic compounds when we're dealing with one to four carbons. One carbon is meth, and you've already seen methane. Two carbons, that is eth, not di, and that would be ethane, which you have been shown. Three carbons is prop, not tri, and four carbons is bute, not tetra. So back to these compounds, this five carbon alkane would be pentane, four carbons would be butane, and two carbons would be ethane. But what if there's branching? This alkane has seven carbons, but we can't call it heptane. Heptane implies all seven carbons in the same main chain. So here's what we need to do. Find the longest continuous chain. That will be our root. Would this be four carbons long, or can we do better? Hmm. How about five carbons long? Can we do better? How about six carbons long? That is the longest continuous chain. So we will give this a root of hex. It's got all single bonds, so the suffix will be ane. And now we need to do something about the branch. We need to know two things about the branch, which carbon it comes off of and how long it is. So if there is a branch, we need to number the chain from the end closest to the branch. Here's one option. Here's the other numbering option. We can see that three is lower numerically than four. So we're gonna use this numbering scheme. Our fourth step is to tell to which carbon the branch is attached, that would be the third carbon, and the number of carbon in the branch using the root and YL. So this is the proper numbering. That branch is one carbon long, so the root for that is meth. It's on the third carbon, so we're gonna call this 3-methylhexane. Now, for typing purposes, Keep in mind that the dashes go between numbers and letters. There's no dash between methyl and hexane. So this would be how we'd name this seven carbon alkane. All right, here is a bigger one for you. First off, let's get the root. This would be the longest chain. So I hope you agree that the part of the chain that I've highlighted in red is the longest chain. And it is nine carbons long. Now, I'm going to number the chain starting at the end that's closest to the branches. So this would be my numbering scheme. I know that this has nine carbons, so it's known. It is an alkane, so we're going to call this nonane. Now, what about the branches? When we use IUPAC nomenclature, this has been agreed upon worldwide. So guess what? Substituents are listed alphabetically in name. Now, many of you are going to be tempted to put two in front of four because two is a lower number. But we're going to go with the alphabetical order of the substituents. The branch off the second carbon is one carbon long, so that is methyl. The branch off the fourth carbon is two carbons long, so that is ethyl. What comes first in the alphabet? E or M? E does. So our name for this is 4-ethyl-2-methyl-nonane. 
Once again, notice we only have hyphens between numbers and letters. There is no hyphen here between methyl and no name. So now it's your turn. Give the name of the molecule below. I'm going to help you by numbering. I have numbered the longest chain for you, and I've started at one closest to the branch. How about another one? Now, just a little hint for you. If you have two branches that are the same, you may group them. So the answer is not D. Okay, now you know some basics of organic nomenclature.